Listen, how many times and in how many different ways does a man have to tell you he does not want you before it sinks in? How many times? I know for me, one is enough. It's enough. What's up? How you doing, Ray of Sunshines? I am your girl, Talisa Ray lifestyle coach we are reviewing married at first sight season 12 episode 11 month anniversary so we are one month in uh you got four weeks left till decision day listen if it's your first time here at my channel you should just click the subscribe button right now be a ray of sunshine but i say it to let you know that i go couple by couple not scene by scene like i said if you watched last week it is so that you can have a whole comprehensive look of of what's happening with the couple and the first couple that we saw or the first couple that we saw was ryan and clara listen they're at ryan's house looking around the house saying what things need to be you know what things he wants to update like the backyard looks like a nice backyard but like the little patio area you know put some of those big white lights up and this is where the projector is gonna go but the thing that got me is when they went back in the house and she was saying she was moving her stuff in already it's four weeks in you already moving your stuff in i don't remember any other couple moving their stuff into someone's house prior to decision day so it's a yes already hands down if you never get to test drive the car prior to you're still gonna say yes the way you are sexually frustrated about how he is not um making any moves towards the sexual intimacy and physical touch that you need you're saying yes already i don't know listen for me it's too soon for her to be moving her boxes in a couple boxes every day why are we doing that she's reorganizing everything making room for herself telling him that he needs to get rid of his this that and the third and we're only going to keep this and he seems visibly uncomfortable visibly like she's taken over right he says it's a bit overwhelming you already know that he's like laid back, kind of reserved, kind of very careful, take step by step. So this is probably a lot for him. Well, it's the one month anniversary, and guess what? They go on a cute little helicopter ride. As they sit there waiting for a takeoff, <laughs> she asks, you know, you know, are you happy with the decision or some shit? And you know, he says, I think it, I think I would do it again. She said, no, he says one of them. And then she says, I think I'd do it again. And he says, thanks, pal. If you did not see her whole face sink, her whole face drop, thanks, pal, is not what she wanted to hear. Because to her, that means we aren't making any progress to having sex for you ever getting to the I love you. None of that. What are we doing? Thanks, pal. I'm glad that she vocalized that that was a problem for her, though, because a lot of people would have just kept their mouth shut and been like, so he was like, thanks, wife. And then that just seemed like insincere to me. You know what I mean? Like, personally, I don't want to have to tell you what to say to me. So when I said that it was something wrong, <laughs> I would feel like it's a prompt and that you just change it, changed it because his, his demeanor didn't change. I really wish we got to see the Ryan that she gets to see behind cameras. Because, of course, you know, you can tell that he is uncomfortable and doesn't speak a lot. But I think that the Ryan behind cameras might be different than the Ryan that we get in front of the cameras with Clara. Uh, but it was def definitely an awkward moment. Clara then asks him, uh, so are there any highlights? Do you have any highlights from the last, you know, what's your favorite part of the last month or so? When I tell you it took him a long time to figure it out, I ain't like it. I ain't like it. I'm sure she didn't like it. It just felt, granted he was probably, come on Talisa, be rational. He was probably trying to think of the time that they shared together. He ultimately ended up saying all of it, having someone there. And if we look back, that is what he said he wanted in his marriage, that he wanted to have someone who would be there for him. So, I mean, it falls in line, right? 
I'm still uncomfortable with the whole pal situation. Like they aren't on the same page about a lot of things. So, uh, after the helicopter ride, they go back to his house and the backyard has been cleaned up and transformed to what they talked about. It looks nice too, right? They sit and they have dinner. Dinner seems a little, a little silent. I guess it's hard to really have conversations if you're not in, if you're not a TV personality, it's kind of hard to have these conversations, like intimate, vulnerable, open conversations in front of the camera. And I'm going to say that as a blanket statement for all of the couples, except for those who are actors and actresses. He asked her kind of to break the silence. Do you, uh, is this what you thought it would be? And she said, you know what? I intentionally went into this without having any real expectations. What I tell y'all about not having expectations, right? You can have an expectation so you have something to compare it to. Like I expect that we will get to know each other and be really good friends. I am hopeful for a genuine connection. I am, you know, hoping that this stays solid and, and we, at the end of the eight weeks, you can have expectations uh, just so that you have something to measure to get an ex an expectation is not a bad thing. And whoever told us this, that makes us think that, oh, I, I'm going into this with no expectations is a lie. Go into everything expecting what you want. That way you can say, oh, this isn't it. This isn't it. This isn't it. And if all of the things aren't it, then baby, that ain't for you. Okay. Granted, there could be some stuff that, you know, are hit and miss. Nobody's perfect. But if mo the majority of your boxes are being checked, are you being enlightened? Anyway, you only know that if you have expectations and you've set expectations and boundaries because they're two different things. I'm on a rant. I'm off on a rant. Uh, as a wife coach, I'm going to pull up. I'm going to pull up. The producers asked if he feels like he is um, falling in love with Clara. And he says, we're getting there. We're getting there. It's a process. And listen, I'm not going to say nothing that I don't believe wholeheartedly myself just because it's a tingly feeling. That's when norm, that's when most people first say, I love you. It's something that people, something that people, how, how people make you feel in words and actions indeed is really what ends up being the, I love you moment. Well, they're watching their wedding video or whatever. And you know, she says to him, it looks like you're talking to somebody you know already, right? And that she's and she's crying and filled with emotion. I did like her vows probably the best, so I can understand why she would feel that way. And then that was the end of them, except for when we see them a little bit later with um, Virginia and Eric. Let's talk about that now, shall we? Let's talk about the date that, the double date that Ryan and Clara and Virginia and Eric had. They all go out to eat. Ryan and Clara, you know, I guess Virginia asked a question about do they feel married or whatever. And they said they both, both of them agree we feel married, right? What does marriage feel like though? Y'all let me know down below in the comments. Um, what, what would you think married would feel like? Is it a connection? Is it that it's someone to come home to? Is it companionship? Is it someone that helps you pay the bill? What, what does marriage feel like for you? Uh, Virginia shares that, you know, about the date that uh, Eric did and now that they both said I love you and <laughs> whatever, okay? Whatever. Like, all of these couples have issues. <laughs> all of them have issues. Ryan was the one to ask, what was the soonest you ever said I love you? And both Virginia and Eric said now, like actually it's probably been three weeks and then they said I love you. Well, like I told you, there's varying degrees of love. I can love you because you did something for me. I can love you because you're doing the process with me. You know what I'm saying? Varying degrees. And so Virginia's all like, right? Cause you haven't said the L word before. You've never said the L word before. He's like, no, no, I haven't. And I was in a two year relationship where I never said I love you. And I just, every time he says it, I think, what the fuck kind of relationship were you in? That that would be okay. Like, mm, what are you measuring love against? How are you determining whether or not you love somebody? That's what I want to know from Ryan. Like, 
if you were with her for two years, was it, what was it? Oh, she was your pal? But you can even love your friends. So you never told your friends I love you? I'm sure he has. Right? Does, is that different? Like, what is the qualifier for him? Anyway, Clara says it out loud. Look, like, six months is the, the, the max. Like, if you haven't said I love you in six months, I'm out of there. Like, what are we doing and why am I here? If I'm with you for six months and you don't have an inkling of love for me, it's a problem. Y'all let me know uh, down below in the comments. Is that realistic? Is six months a realistic time frame for somebody? I mean, if you're spending every single day with someone, you know what I mean? Of course, not all day, but I come home to you, I wake up to you, like, that's a lot. You get to know somebody rather click quickly. So six months, I think, I, I think that that's fair. Cause if I'm with you every day for six months, you should know whether or not you love me or not. I don't know if y'all don't agree. Tell me down below in the comments. I wrote down because she says, you know what? I'm already, I already feel that way about him. I already love him in a friendship kind of companionship kind of way, right? Varying degrees of love. And so I kind of thought to myself, the question popped in my head when she was saying it and then she always like frowns up her face when the thing about sex and about the love and religion comes up. She kind of does this thing with her face where made me wonder, is she really happy? Those are big things, like big boxes that you have to concern yourself with. So are you really happy in this relationship? All right, y'all, let's talk about who we saw next, which was Paige and... Chris. Hopefully this is the last time that we have to talk about them as a collective. Cause they do still have a contract obligation. So maybe we will talk about them separately. I mean, like I said, how many times does someone have to say that they don't like you for you to understand that you're not it for you to understand that we need to go but i'm getting beside myself because when we first see them they're playing basketball you know he invites her to play basketball uh you know it would be cute if we like them right but it ain't okay um she says that she's disappointed about the new car but she's gonna keep going and then you hear chris say that he's also not going to give up on the marriage that he is going to keep trying well, when they finished their little one-on-one -on -one basketball, whatever they was doing, um, they sit down and he asked, like, you know, what are your long-term goals? And he, I mean, he was like, you know, I know you don't know what your long-term goals are yet or whatever, which I feel like we all should at least know five years in advance what our plan is for ourselves. Um, and then... She said, well, you know, what are yours? And he said, well, you know, I want to have three to five multi-million dollar businesses establishes on their own, that they hold that kind of value on their each respectively on their own. You know, I want a family, you know, cause he wants multiple children. Um, he also shares with us that he's a bit of an introvert and that he needs to recharge. Now, listen, I'm an ambivert. I'm not an introvert. I'm an ambivert, which means I can flip. I can go being very outgoing and extrovert or be an introvert. And normally I need to go within, right? So I am an extrovert that needs to recharge. And I really think that that's probably what he means because she was probably, she was not probably, she was shocked by the fact that that's how he uh, classified himself, but was like, I can see it. Then she asks him, you know, so you were married, you were engaged twice. Like I knew about the one time, but twice, what happened the first time? I mean, she's finally asking questions that mean something. Um, and it's partly her downfall. We'll, we'll, we'll see in a minute. Um, he said, you know, he was in his twenties and they were too young. She asked how long before you got married? I mean, before you asked her to marry her, did you do that? He said, I didn't want to share, which means to me that it was rather quickly. Like, I don't, I don't have an issue with people getting married or even getting engaged quickly. Like I met my husband in June of 11. He proposed in December of 11. Okay. So what is that? Six months. He knew he loved me, right? He probably knew me. He loved me from day one. I mean, I just got that kind of energy. Um, and then we got married in July of the following year. So, um, I, I don't have anything wrong. I don't see anything wrong with you catapulting, especially when you get to a particular age. However, 
I think that for him in his 20s and then again, he's searching for something, right? He's searching for something that he feel like he's missed. I'm just gonna keep going. She feels like she's learning him and she likes to spend time with him. We gonna, really, you like to spend time with him? We finna, we finna see, ain't we? Um, I wrote down, I just don't like her anymore. I just don't like her anymore. Like, I want the best for Paige. I think she's beautiful and has a great spirit, but I just don't like her anymore. I just don't, like, I, let me not say I don't like her. I don't like how she's portraying herself here on this show. Cause I don't know her not to like her, but what I'm seeing on the show is making me, um, apprehensive. Like if this was a woman that I had to mentor, I would be really like, she got a lot of homework, a lot of work to do. Let me keep going. So then we see them again a little later and they go to shoot pool or billiards or whatever you call them. And you know, he's all like, you should shoot first cause you ain't gonna get another chance. Okay. Um, he ain't as great as he said, but he did all right. I used to, I used to play, I used to shoot pool. Uh, I went the other day at my uncle's grand opening and I was like, what is this? I need to practice because it was horrible. Horrible. <sighs> this is so, he's like, he's really double-minded and so is she. But, so he says, first off, he's got on this like checkered print suit and she's got on jeans and a half top. Like, did you not tell her to dress up or, or are you coming from work? Like, and her tennis shoes look grimy to me that I saw, but... I'm, I'm overdoing it. I'm not giving her a chance. She should have, he should have told her to dress nice or she should have thought it was a date. So I'm going to dress up a little bit. I don't know. Anyway, he says that he is starting to find her more attractive and she has a nice body. Like he's, she's beautiful to him now, you know, cause before she wasn't. Now here's where things get a little like, Oh, so let's shine a light from heaven lord shine on me like we find some stuff out come on shine down the light from heaven lord shine on me shine on me let's let's shed light on the situation shall we so um i can't remember what he asked her for and she said she wanted consistency i think he had mentioned trying to call her or something or I don't know, but that she wanted him to be consistent with his communication. That's what she wants. I want you to be consistent with your communication. And he says uh, that she doesn't communicate well. Now, when he said that, I thought, well, what the hell you mean? She been doing a lot of communicating. Neither one of you actually do well, but you know, but in his, in his mind, the communication was she's not answering his phone calls, that he's been calling her, trying to connect with her so that they can build something, and she has not been answering. Now, I just want y'all to remember that all this time she's been talking about how, you know, she was committed to the process and that she was all in and he had him a real one. And remember, she just wanted him the last time when they met with Dr. Viviana, she just wanted him to call every now and again. And he said he called five to seven times so that he could hook up with her in person. Like, and he, she said, well, you should, I was with my mother when you called and you should have sent me a text message. And he was like, you know what? I feel like that is rejection. I mean, if I'm calling you on five to seven different occasions and you're not answering me, you're doing that shit on purpose. It is intentional and purposeful that you are not answering that call because you feel like you need to be vindicated. Let's just call a spade a spade. I want him to want me. He needs to be chasing after me. Girl, after twice, you should have answered on the third time. I mean, you said you wanted this relationship. I mean, I wouldn't know why, but that's what you said. And I'm just trying to be rational and think about what's here right now. All the things that she's been saying, he's telling us that uh, he was doing, specifically the calls. And he was like, nothing has changed since the last time we spoke. Remember she said that last week, but he said he'd been reaching out. Who's telling the truth here? I'm gonna say it's Chris. And the reason why I'm gonna say it's Chris is because she did not deny it. She did not say, you didn't call me that many times. I didn't get no message or whatever. She said, why didn't you leave me a text message? Cause she is trying to go tit for tat. You listen, if you ain't about that life, you shouldn't do it, okay? Listen, because sometimes tip for tat backfires. If it's something that you really want, you act like you want it. He was making the effort that you wanted him to make. I don't know, y'all. Listen, I know y'all feel differently than I do, so do it down below in the comments. Well, he also says that she doesn't communicate well. Let me back up for just a second. Um, and then they show us the clip. 
when they were in Vegas. You haven't asked me about my ex fiance, about my uh, the baby on the way. You haven't asked me how I was feeling or what I was doing. Like I can see, excuse me, where you could see that it's not being communicative, not being able to communicate well. I can see it. And she did say, remember, she did herself a disservice last week when they were having Bible study that, um, listen, I, I should have asked more questions. He then went on to say, neither of us are being good spouses and his needs are not being met emotionally. I think that this is the most clear that Chris has been the entire, well, not the most clear, but this is something that we all can understand, right? I mean, we don't like him. And I also want to say this while I'm thinking about it right now, it's not something I wrote down, but because they aren't being intimate, that's not clouding his judgment. So she's not giving up her goodness and mercy and letting him, you know, get in there in a the cookie jar and leave crumbs around and not clean up after himself. He is seeing now that she is not what he wants, right? So as long as she was fucking him, he was emotionally connected. Y'all, I might have pulled that theory out of the out of the sky, pulled it out of a hat, but it sounds good to me. It feels good to me. It feels right. She finally says to him a whole lot of stuff that we I don't understand, you know, blah blah blah, and we both have to show up, but the fact of the matter is you don't respect me. Yeah, um, I don't think any of us are going to disagree with the fact that he does not respect her at all. You know, and he, he says, what do you mean? I do respect you at all. Then we hear, gets a little more insight. Chris says that she doesn't talk off camera, that they have no connection, that they are disconnected emotionally. Um, that she doesn't want to hang outside of when they are filming. Like, I mean, I don't blame her. You know what I'm saying? But if you're saying that you're resetting, right? Hello, I'm gullible and I'm resetting and he's making an effort because that's what you wanted. You're not meeting outside to build whatever this thing is that you had been harping about the whole time. Maybe quite possibly because you really didn't want it. I don't know. Y'all tell me, give me a theory down below in the comments. He tells, he tells her finally, ultimately, you know, we're at a dead end. There's nowhere further we can go in the process. She had gotten up or whatever. Now she's over there crying. Okay. Over there crying because he, he made it very finite, very clear that I don't want to do this. Right. Even though he said it before when I, I want a divorce and then he said it in his actions about, I think I want to make it work with Mercedes. And he said it before when he was like, I'm not really attracted to you. Now she's going to cry now because it feels more official. You shouldn't even be crying. It shouldn't even, shouldn't even be a surprise. It's not a Jack in a box and it popped out and you said, oh, surprise, honey, you have seen it. He had already said it. It wasn't even you seen it coming. Cause it had already came and went and came back and went. And here we are again <sighs> at the one month anniversary. She's sitting there watching, looking at the books and watching the video by herself. I would not, I would not be reliving these moments. I would not. What is the point of that? Somebody tell me, is it so that you can see that that wasn't what you wanted or what? I don't know. And then the producer asked, so where do you go from here uh, in this process? What are your next steps? I'm glad that she said, you know what, to be alone. I'm glad that she said that, you know what, God is, I still want marriage. I'm not turned off by it. I still want children and God has that in store for me. I'm really glad that she said that. I really am because baby, let me tell you. Uh, and more importantly, what I had said early on is that I thought that she needed to learn to choose herself. And that is something that she just said she learned how to do. Uh, you know, that there's compromise, but I got to put my needs first. She was like, I got to be selfish selfless. I'm all like, yeah, that's a thing. But if you aren't together and you don't know what you want, then you are no good to no one else. Like just the idea of marriage is not enough. So that's going to bring me into the conversation between, um, Clara. No, 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 not Clara. Haley Paige and Brianna. And I feel like there's a divide, right? Uh, 
uh, Virginia had said that her and Clara had hit it off best. And now you don't, you saw them with a separate thing and now you see the three of them having some kind of lunch and discussing their relationships. Brianna says, Vince says he's all in and she's just a little hesitant because it's so quick. Haley says that they've been sleeping in the same bedroom um, and that's a big milestone for them, is it? Or did she say that or I just wrote that? Mm. Uh, but I did say that they are communicating a little better. And then she also told us that she's gonna have her friend come over and read her tarot. When Paige starts talk sharing, it's when it's her turn to share, she talks about the car, the new Mercedes that Mercedes is getting uh, because of the baby in her belly, uh, which is no longer there. So she still gets the Mercedes, right? It's a win-win situation. Brianna says to, to Paige that you need to give to him what he's giving. It looks like that's what she did. And now, you know, she's crying because he doesn't want to try anymore. He wants to give up. Um, then she talks about, um, right now she, you know, they're learning one another and she's having a hard time, you know, deciphering routine or how about just getting to know him versus what she knows and what they've already been through. But the, the thing about this whole conversation that stood out for me when it related to Paige, and that's why I did this right after, is the fact that she said what I said, which is, have I fallen in love with the idea of marriage? I wrote down a resounding yes, you have. You have fallen in love with the concept of being married, married, wanting to be married, wanting to have, wanting to have that, and not actually being married. Okay, so let's talk about Haley and Jake. Okay, so like I said, Haley said she was gonna have her tarot, have a tarot read done, not a tarot read, but a a life chart birth chart have his birth chart read anyway so her tarot reading friend comes over and i figure is this her friend or is this somebody they bought um that that they pay for because if it's her friend and then her friend would have insight on who she is and on the relationship so my hope is that i heard that incorrectly and that uh the woman whoever who her name is i don't know um that she is not a friend right she's set up with her crystals and her sage and her tarot cards and she gets in she talks about um that there's a strong energy in here um i'm, I'm writing it down we're gonna skip it if y'all remember what kind of energy she said you let me know down below in the comments but she also said that there is um secretly that someone wants control over the other one and i i thought it was gonna be jake saying it was him because you know what he wanted but Haley was like nope it, you know it's me Haley wants i wrote down she wants the upper hand it's not that she wants control right but she does kind of want the upper hand she has control right now of the relationship by saying that we ain't we not breathing together. <laughs> we ain't gonna sit in the same space too long together. She has the control. Um, the uh, spiritualist says, release, you guys are gonna have to release all of that strong energy that's going in here around is strong, I guess like a negative energy and let things flow naturally. She tells them that they are a good match based on their moon signs. Their moon signs both match up as well as their life, their life number six and eight. Um, that they both match up as well, which was a shocker probably to all of us because they don't act like they have anything in common. That's because Haley isn't attracted to him. And if she was attracted to him, we'd probably see something differently. Um, what she tells them is practice unconditional love. Do y'all think love is unconditional or does it come with conditions? For a lot of people, it comes with conditions. People don't accept you as you are. People say, I love you if you do this. I love you as long as you are like this, uh, uh, act like this, look like this. It comes with conditions. Uh, uh, people don't really know what unconditional love is, right? I'm, unconditional means I accept you for who you are, the good, the bad, the indifferent. Most people have conditions. If you don't agree with me, you know where to do it at down below in the comments i mean and if you're being honest with yourself you probably have conditions as well conditions he has to make a certain amount of money um he has to treat me a certain way like those are the treat me a certain kind of way is a condition that most of us will not get rid of because i'm not gonna handle i'm not gonna be with nobody that's abusive it's a condition no matter how you look at it it's a condition okay you're gonna probably say that's negative a condition is a condition, child. 
And for me, you ain't putting your hands on me, okay? And you ain't gonna talk to me any kind of way. And I'm not picking nobody who's gonna talk to me any kind of way and gonna put their hands on me. Let's just start right there. Who's gonna be disrespectful? Let's just, let's just stop right there. I'm not picking you. And the end. Okay, let me keep going. Um, so then we have the one month anniversary and they go to wine tasting, which is barrel tasting. I've never done that before. It looks so dope how they pull it out the barrel and it goes into the glass. Yum. Um, Jake says, you know what? I'm okay with us being friends versus fighting and he's not going to pressure her anymore. I made an observation. I said that he's trying in his dress. Like he still got on them old raggedy them old jeans that look like he been wearing them for the whole time. He probably got 15 pair of the same jeans, but his, his shirt, he has a button down shirt on. You know, I, I think that he's trying to be somebody or look the way that she would have him or want him to look. They are looking at the book, going through their photos. He's constantly like downing himself. Like I'm not a good picture taker. I'm not this, I'm not that. And I thought to myself, they actually look pretty good. I wrote down also, she lied in her vows that she promised that she would always see things as a glass half full. Honey, this full, this glass is empty that you have. You don't even see it, uh, you know, half gone. You see it zero. There's nothing in, in that glass. So I think that that was a lie in your, in your vows. We then see Jake say, cause they show like the kissing. He said in, in watching that moment, he realizes he saw her pull back and he felt it pull. He felt her pull back when they kissed then. And he, you know, it's just one of those things like, oh, maybe she just doesn't know me. But now he understands that it's more than just that she doesn't know me. It's that she doesn't like me. Um, she makes, you know, like a positive toast like moving forward or some shit i don't know going forward and be more positive or something and he's all like yeah uh -uh. i don't agree we have to do something differently we have to figure out how are we going to move differently we just can't say um we're gonna toast to it being better jake has no problem sharing his truth about how he thinks she feels about him he says to her i think that you i feel like you just look past me and she's like confused. Like, what do you mean? He's like, just what I said. Like, we're in the same room together and I don't, I feel like you don't see me. I wrote down that he is not only physical touch, but he needs words of affirmation, right? He needs to be acknowledged that you are building something that you do like me. When he said that you look past me, that is not like you're like, I'm not in the room. He said, there are, I, I believe that there are reasons that you're not attracted to me and you're not saying why, like you're not being honest about it. Right. And all of us, including him, that's why he feels like that. He feels like that because he knows that the sex is the thing that turned her off. Haley is all like, I wasn't aware you felt like that. How long have you felt like that? And he says, since like day four and you're just saying something now. Yes. Okay, because he was just trying to see if maybe it was going to change. Maybe something was going to change. Maybe he was going to have an opportunity to look differently, to see things differently, to see, you know, maybe, just maybe, just maybe. She said to him, you know what, you know, I need a bond before I can be, before I, you know, I let you touch all over me, right? Well, you didn't need no bond on day four after that shark uh, at the aquarium dinner. You didn't need no, you didn't need, that wasn't a thing for you then. I don't care how, how drunk you are, if that is your uh, MO, then guess what? That would always be your MO. It's not going to change. You're going to still be a little, you know, you might get a little more free, but you ain't going to be all in. You have some inhibitions, but not all the way. If your MO is, uh, I don't, I don't, I got to know you before. Look at Ryan. Um, they could have been, you know, doing some other things and not intercourse. Nevertheless, he said, it is, he said, it is the disgusted side for me <laughs> after we do our one hug every day, our prescriptive one hug every day. It's the, as if it's a, a bother, a chore, if it's worrisome, like nobody wants to be here and <sighs> cause you got to hug me. You don't have to hug me. I don't want you to hug me. If you're going to be sighing because it's too much, I don't want you to hug me. It's just a hug. It's a hug and I think you look at it too much. He said, you hug strangers and smile at strangers, but don't do that for me. And she said, I'm never going to see them again. And he said, don't worry. In four weeks, you won't have to see me either. Like Jake, 
<laughs> is playing no games. I don't want him to come back and apologize for the shit that he's saying. I really don't. I really want him to stand on his truth and say that this is how I feel. Like, and his delivery wasn't bad to me. I mean, it did have a little sarcasm in it, but it's his truth and he needs to hold to it. Going back and apologizing for it negates everything that you said. You could say I meant what I said. Um, maybe my delivery was wrong or it was at the wrong time because this was our anniversary. But please don't apologize for what you say, Jake. Please next week don't apologize for what you say. He says it's done. We, you know, she's saying we end up in the same place all the time, in this same circle, doing the same thing. Uh, he says it's going to take lightning to strike for us to actually like one another. I'm all like, no hold bar. And then you see her in her like personal confection, confession, like, I don't know how much I have left to give. Uh, what are you giving though? After that first couple days, um, being married, you aren't giving anything now, but rejection. I don't know if y'all don't agree with me, please tell me down below in the comments. I'm proud of Jake as always. And I want Haley to be more open and honest about why she doesn't like him. You're too old. You're weird as fuck. You tell these jokes, um, that people aren't in on that make you feel bad, but it's really a joke. Like, cause he got, he's probably got dry, sarcastic wit, right? Like there's all these things. Sex wasn't that great. All these things that she has to be honest about. And then I'm all like, okay, so this is, these people need the experts. We've only seen them twice. We've seen Viviana, we've seen Dr. Cal twice in all this time. Where are they? They may be watching from the sidelines, but where are they so that th these people can have more guidance? <sighs> okay, so let's talk Virginia and Eric. They have a little picnic. Virginia wanted to show her how much she cares. Um, and then they talk about Ryan and Clara and the move in and how quickly it is. And he was like, you can move stuff into my place if you want to. And she's like, yeah, no, I don't want to pretty much. I don't want to live with you. I don't I mean, I don't want to live in that house. I don't want to live there. I don't want to live there. He does. She wants an our place. So not a, my place, not a, your place, but an our place. So I don't want to move into your home, which to her feels like a bachelor pad. Right. And listen, I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with moving into, to, to one space together. He says, well, you're going to have to live there for a period of time because I have to sell it. I can't just move. I have to sell my condo. Excuse me. You're going to have to be there for a period of time. If you're going to be with me, let me fix that. He sees her saying that she doesn't want to move into the place temporarily as her not wanting to be with him. Like his insecurities is showing. There are several reasons, right? Like I said, you moving into someone else's place. You can always say, this is my place. You need to get out. Not only that, are you going to make the move to sell the place? Am I going to end up being here? And then she gave off a list of reasons about the dogs and how they're already uncomfortable. Like you're already uncomfortable with them and every, all of this stuff. We see next week they have a big fight about the dogs. Honey, that'll, that'll ruin your relationship. Them is her babies. Them is her kids. Okay. She may not physically want to birth any right now, but them puppies, them is her babies. He better watch it. She pretty much tells him how uncomfortable she is about living in this place that is his. And he just dismisses her and her concerns and tells her, I know where I'm going to be when this is over and you just be wherever. Are you for real, Eric? Is that how you talk to people that you love? He said, well, we can come up with a compromise and you can come, you can come to my place. And she's all like, that's still the same thing. You're still saying the same thing. You're still saying the same thing, Eric. I've been trying to fix my hair and just keep it out of my face. So let's do that. Well, it's their one month, their, their celebration of one month as they go to their family's hangar and he takes her for a ride on the airplane. But before they do that, um, they look at their photos, right? I'm, I wrote down. Look at the photos and talk some mushy, unrealistic stuff is what I just said. That's what I wrote. <laughs> I said that she enjoyed herself on that, on that, uh, propeller plane with her husband. Like I can see where that's fun. And I also said to myself at this, in this particular juncture, I said, they are going to make it work no matter what they are going to figure out how to make it work. In this point, that's what I said. Like they, just for the sake of saying, we're going to make it work, right? He put, 
then they go back to the hangar and they have dinner. They uh, are the only ones that are going, that exchanged any gifts. And the gifts that were given was a blanket of her and Tex um, and some love coupons so that he can take the blanket with him when he's traveling and he, she can always be there kind of, I suppose. Um, he didn't seem enthused about his gift and she didn't seem enthused about hers, which was, um, the GPS or longitude and latitude of where they got married at so that he doesn't say it every time they pass. Oh, this is where we got married. Oh, we got married here. Oh, we got married here. Oh, we got married here. Well, they have some conversations and he talks about how he's happy that their communication has improved. Uh, Virginia asks, where are, how do you feel since the last time I said, you said, I love you. And I think that that was the first time you said, I love you. And I think that was just a week ago, right? Even in the grand scheme of things, when we look at the dates, I still think that it was only a few days ago. So he just says, I grow to love you more every day. Like her being in her twenties, that's the kind of thing that shows up. I don't remember being like that in my twenties, but I had a child, honey, and I had to be real realistic about my whole life. Um, well, Virginia does talk about her feelings and her insecurities about the relationship ending, you know, because her last relationship, she had a heartbreak and that's her fear now that this will end and her heart will be broken. He also says that, you know, I trust you and everything, but I'm also scared too. Cause you're a runner, you're a track star. Like, <laughs> anyway. Let's talk about Brianna and Vincent, which is really, really quick because we only saw them briefly and that was for the one month anniversary because uh, they ain't really got no problems this week is what it is. So we see them driving in the car and she's like, I really want to know. It's not that I'm a control freak. I just need to know where I'm going. Relax. That is, that is a control freak. Having to know every detail of a surprise about where you're going or where you're headed. He should have just said uh, we're going a little further in the city or, or something out the city at the edge, edge of the city, wherever he, wherever they are, uh, to go to the lake. Right. He didn't have to say he was going to the lake, but just say it. We're going to this city and the end, but I'm glad he didn't tell her, you know, let it be a surprise. She was pleasantly surprised that there was a boat, um, that they were going on the boat for dinner. Right. They sat down and they watched their wedding. Both of them are all smiles and happy about the choices. And I remember being happy about them together. Don't you remember that too? Um, I wrote down, Brianna is so poised and articulate. Every time I see her in like her little personal confessionals or whatever they're called with the producers, I always think that she's so poised and so elegant and articulate. And I love it. Like she's an engineer. So Vince says that, that he's ha that he's happy that she hasn't run away. Why would she run away, Vince? Because you have a bit of a temper, because you aren't you don't communicate well, because you don't know how to be vulnerable. Why would she run away? I mean, there's a myriad of things that we saw that you might have anger issues, um, that you have unresolved anger issues, that you have daddy issues shit uh just a myriad of things so why would she run away is my question any of those we can pick one close your eyes pick one <laughs> um and she says you know what i don't really we haven't really had any issues any real issues and i don't foresee us having any issues but we do have you know we've had hard conversations but nothing that i see is going to be detrimental in the future that's because you're not on the outside looking in as long as he does the work for self and really like does some reflective work, some shadow work, go get some therapy. I don't know, do some praying, like ask God to reveal some things for him. As long as he does the work required, I think that they can work. But if he keeps having flashes of this anger and this embarrassment and this machismo attitude, she going to be gone in like six months. Cause she's going to say yes. They both going to say yes. She's going to be gone in like a year. They go upstairs to a nice dinner that is overlooking the lake on top of the boat. 
And he was like, last time with the bottle, blah, blah, blah. And he pops the champagne. It was like making light. And she was like, oh, champagne Vinny. So the way she said it this time was more loving and endearing than it was the first time. Sort of some encouragement, right? Cause now we're making, you know, it's like we're making fun or we've improved from a situation that wasn't so great previously. Um, let me see. He asked her if she feels married and she says, um, I don't know. Um, do I feel married? That's why I asked you, what does it feel? What is that? Um, it say goes back to the same question with the double date conversation. What is it? What is it to feel married? Because what she said was, um, in the sense of how people think of marriage, everything I hear is it's horrible. It's burdensome. You know what I mean? Like it's a problem. Um, I don't feel like that. It doesn't feel obligatory is what she said. Um, but you know, it's something that she wants to do every day. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's listen, you've got to be hella evolved for marriage and you have to be willing to do those three C's at minimum commitment, compromise, communication. Vince says in agreement, we do this because we want to. And he says, you know what? I'm putting my family first. I'm pushing so that we can have nice things. I think about you guys, you and Cookie are in the forefront. Like, see, he has incorporated Cookie in his thought process, which is a win for him because Cookie is her baby. That, like I said, this is where Eric is going to falter. These people love their they dogs like they their kids. He wants nice things, nice house, you know, so their kids can have their own bedroom. Listen. Some of the things when you hear him talk, like the kids to have their own bedroom, for him to have a man cave, um, it's because those are things that he didn't have when he was growing up and things that he thinks will show you as successful, right? Anyway, that ends this entire episode. Check me out. I got it up early. Um, let me know down below in the comments what you think about this episode. Thank you so much for watching my review of Married at First Sight, season 12, episode number 11. Listen, just so you remember, on Sundays, I'm over at Little Black Book 91's channel for the Married at First Sight Coalition. It is at uh, 12K UK time. Y'all got to figure that out because I think when we change times, it's now 8 p.m. Eastern Standard, right? But it may go back to 7 or something when they spring forward. I don't know how, I don't know how it works. I'll keep you abreast. abreast. No, they change time this, this week. They do some kind of time change this week. Mm. Look for my little post that'll tell you what time it is this Sunday. If you want to do the math at 12 K UK time, 12 PM UK time. That is when, uh, the married at first sight coalition will be happening. If it is your first time visiting my channel, definitely click the subscribe button and become a ray of sunshine. You're there. Click that notification bell. The thing that says all not personalized all because you want all my videos and you want to watch all my videos because you like me and because you like me, you're going to give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> not only are you going to give this video a thumbs up, but you are going to share it, share it with your friends so that they can join us in the conversation. I love you in real life and want every good thing that God has in store for you. Even if you don't know what that is for yourself, Hugs and kisses and lots of love. I'll catch you on the next review.